Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Van Build Tech Talks with Kurt. I'm Kurt, and for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, about six months ago, uh, Snow and I and our two kitties left on a journey that will take us around the world. We're currently on our Farewell USA tour, but to do that, we converted our 2018 four-wheel drive dually sprinter van into a tiny home on wheels. And so this is a complete self, uh, self-converted van and th these tech talks are going to, these tech talks have addressed all the various uh, major topics of the van build. And so we've covered today, we've covered things like solar, we've covered air conditioning, our recirculating shower, layout and planning, and a whole host of other topics. But today we're going to talk about an hydronic, a hydronic water and air heating system. And I'm super excited about this. And I'll jump right in and tell you why. Uh, first of all, when we first started converting the van, you know, I didn't know much about it, but obviously there was a lot of research to do. As it relates to this topic, there were really kind of three things that I needed to do. And number one was I needed to heat water. The, hot, the heating of the water was primarily for the shower, so we have a recirculating shower system. If you haven't seen that video, you'll definitely want to check that out. Uh, so we wanted on-demand hot water for um, the recirculating shower. Um, it's always nice to have it for the sink, but certainly not a requirement. We can heat water on the stove for that. But the first thing we needed to do was heat water. The second thing is heat air. So we needed a, a heater for when we're in colder temperatures so we can heat the inside of the van and heat air. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is most of the plumbing that we have for the van is under chassis. So our water tanks, our gray tanks, our filtration systems, all that stuff, our water pumps, all that stuff is under chassis. And so again, obviously if we're in colder climates, that's subject to freeze. And so the third thing we needed to do was we needed to be able to weatherproof or heat or under chassis plumbing. And so those were the three things that I wanted to accomplish. And so I was looking for either a single solution or a solution or three separate solutions to do all of those things. Now, an interesting thing is this morning we woke up in Southern Utah and it was like, almost, I mean, it was like 20, low 20 degrees, so below freezing. And of course our pumps or pipes or whatever froze, so we didn't have water. Now, I have gotten a ton of comments in the videos from my recirculating shower. And by the way, I always appreciate and love your comments. But I've gotten a ton of those about weatherproofing the under chassis. And I told everybody in the comments, I answered and I said, I'm not worried about that. We're gonna stay south of the freezing lines. I don't anticipate that. Uh, we're going to need that uh, within the next year. Well, I was wrong. So uh, we had some issues with freezing last night. And so now I've accelerated my plan to do some weatherproofing under chassis. And so I wanted something that was going to solve all, check all three of those boxes, water, air, and under chassis. Another thing, I did not want to deal with propane. And uh, obviously, um, propane can be a, a low cost um, heating option, um, but it's also another fuel source. And in our journey, we plan on traveling around the world. And so um, I think propane availability, as well as the fixtures you need to refill your tanks and all that stuff and secure it is different. And it just was one more thing that we didn't want to deal with. And so we kind of started with a parameter of no propane. And then another thing was we kind of wanted a no limit heating capacity. So for example, in a recirculating shower, you'll hear me talk about we take 30 minute showers, hot showers, and then snow will take a 30 minute shower and I'll take a 30 minute shower. So it's not uncommon for us to use an hour of hot water um, in a given time or a given day. And so we didn't want to be limited by amount of heating capacity or hot water we had. And so if you have like a three gallon water tank or something like that, you know, you're limited to that amount of hot water until it can refill and heat again. And so we, we were really interested in on-demand heating. And then we wanted something that was both, uh, I guess sustainable is the word, and flexible enough for us to, to be able to 
work in the different climates and the different areas and something where we could, you know, if we weren't using the under chassis heating system that we could turn that thing off. And so it wouldn't be using all of our, our energy to do something that when, when we're in warm temperatures and we don't need the under chassis. So we wanted something sustainable, versatile, flexible enough to do all the things. And so I was pretty excited when I found the hydronic heating system. And so this is not really, this is not a new system. This is not nuance. Um, although I primarily see in builds in different YouTube videos, I see people using an Airtronic. So it's generally they're made by either S-Bar or Wabasto. There's a bunch of other manufacturers as well. And basically it sips diesel out of your tank and there's a diesel burner in there, heats the air. And from what I've heard, those are very effective just rave reviews about how effective they are for heating and controlling air temperature in the van and uh, but it doesn't do anything for water so let me tell you about the hydronic heating system so essentially what happens is is there's a hydronic heater or boiler if you will that mounts under chassis and I'll show you just kind of a picture of where these components sit in our van and then we'll kind of get into the details in terms of how this is configured and how it actually works but i have a so i have an s-bar um, heater hi, uh, hydronic heater so it heats uh, like a, a a coolant like an antifreeze or glycol solution so it sips diesel out of the tank has a burner in and heat superheats to like 170 to 190 degrees this glycol or this antifreeze and then in the system there's a coolant pump and so as that that liquids being heated that pumps and circulates it circulates that uh, fluid through uh, the loop of the system and that runs through different heat exchangers and those heat exchangers are what heats the air and or the water and or um, the under chassis thing. So really what this does is gives me the ability to do all three things with one system. Now, additionally, I have a separate sink plumbing system than the recirculating shower. So the recirculating shower is a cold loop system because I recirculate it. So I don't want to be drinking that water, cooking with that water. So that's a separate system. So I needed the ability to be able to heat both my sink water and my shower water separately. And so I accomplished that by having two separate heat exchangers and that allows me to do that with that one heater circulating. So let me just kind of slow down and let me go through this and show you what this looks like. Um, so the first shot that I showed you there was kind of like in the with the layout of my van. And so if you can see off to, you can see where the driver's seat. So under the, under the hood there, is a coolant expansion reservoir and that's uh that's where i fill the system with glycol or antifreeze and um and that's kind of if as as the coolant heats it expands and so that also acts as an expansion tank but it keeps constant a constant um uh, what's the word i'm looking for it keeps a constant amount of antifreeze right there so or glycol so the system doesn't run dry the two heat exchangers under the sink and under the shower in that area and then there's a controller and that's a basically a timer that turns the heater and the circulation pump on and so that's kind of going to be the control system for control parts for the system and so if you kind of strip away all the furniture and everything now you guys should have a good layout of the van you can kind of see what the plumbing looks like under chassis so if you start down on the bottom there you'll see where the hydronic coolant heater sits and so again basically that is tapped into the diesel tank so it sips a little diesel out of there when i turn the timer on the controller which happens to be in my bedroom when i turn that on that sends an electric ignite, igniting switch to that burner and that burner kicks on that diesel burner and that heats that coolant at the same time that that water coolant pump kicks on and starts circulating water through my system. So I use one inch radiator hose for the system. So those purple lines would represent that hose. So if you'll see uh, leaving the coolant pump, uh, 
I actually run my line and my line runs basically parallel to my water lines that are under chassis. And so they're zip tied to those and, uh, and I'll get into this later, but as part of the under chassis heating, I plan on insulating the two of those together. But in any case, that runs along my water, my fresh water and my gray water tank. It crosses the van and under the, under the sink uh, in the kitchen under chassis, I have two heat exchangers. And so I go into one, come out of that one, go into the second one and then come out of that. And then the loop continues and I've got the loop plumbed all the way back to the back of the van where I have my shower plumbing, my filtration, all the stuff that I have for my recy uh, circulating shower. Now, I don't have any heat exchangers back there. I put that loop back there so that in the future, I can do some under chassis heating back there to keep that stuff from freezing up. And so that's why I have that loop back there. And then you see as that loop kind of circles around all my plumbing back there, it comes up to the front and it actually goes right over the filtration system that I have for my sink. And then it crosses over back into the water pump and the pump pushes that through the, um, the, the coolant heater. And it, so that's kind of the loop that that circles around. Now, again, um, that, that coolant, that glycol gets heated to about 170 to 190 degrees. The thermostat controls all that. So once I set the timer and turn that on, and by the way, it is a timer. And so I set that to run for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, and that heater will run. It'll circulate and heat that glycol to 190 degrees. The thermostat with inside that little burner will kick on and off as necessary to maintain that temperature range of 170 to 190. Now, as the water goes through that heat exchanger, there's a bunch of metal plates in that and that heats that heat exchanger, those metal plates. And then so the water from my, my plumbing line comes through that heat exchanger and then comes out. And so the glycol or the coolant, the heating solution heats those metal plates and then the water is pumped through there. Now those are not in the same loop, so they don't make contact, but they do make contact with those superheated plates. And then when the water comes out, it's hot. And so that's been a very effective system for heating our water, for our showers. If you guys, again, if you guys have seen our other videos, um, you know, we have continuous hot, hot water for as long as we set that timer for, and we're super, super happy about that. So that works great. And so that's basically how that works. Um, one other thing is we have not put the actually air heating unit in, but it works in similar fashion. And so I will do another video on how I did the heating piece of it. But in short, that glycol gets pumped up through that air heat exchanger, right? There's coils or there's fans or there's coils in there. And so it superheats those coils and circulates out. And then there's fans that heat those coil, uh, blow, blow air through those coils. And that's what heats the air. So it kind of works like the old boiler systems. And they, they still have some of those systems, but that's kind of the concept of that. And so um, that will heat the air inside the van. And then the third component, and again, as I winterize in the next coming weeks, um, I'll probably do another Tech Talk video to describe how I did that. Uh, but basically, I'll be tapping into that same glycol or cooling stuff. I'll be tapping into that to heat the under chassis elements. So Vanna's clearly wanting to get in the Tech Talk video, which uh, <laughs> she's becoming quite the little superstar. But, but so, that's, so that's how I'm going to address the uh, undermount heating. And so in short, that's the, uh, so in short, that's the hydronic heating system. That's why I chose this particular one. Now I have an S bar heater, but what I will tell you is, and I, I talk to a lot of people about this, there are some, uh, you know, I think Wabasto makes them, um, but, but also there's, there's some other off-brand ones that you can get from Amazon. Honestly, I talked to some professionals and that's what they install over the S-Bar themselves. And so sourcing an S-Bar, their, their German heater was a bit of a challenge. I've found a great company up in Michigan that, that helped us out with those. 
There are other brands of heaters out there. I'll actually put, uh, I'll put a link to one of the other brands. I can't put a link to the s because I don't have one. Um, but I will put a link to another similar brand in the description so you guys can see what that is. And also, if you want to see what any of these components actually look like to help kind of put this diagram together, I'll link those in the descriptions so you can see those. So that's it for the hydronic heating system. Uh, we are going to be talking about a composting toilet coming up in a new Tech Talk, and we kind of have something that I don't really see out there a whole lot. I feel like everybody's kind of going down one path, and we went down a, certainly a different path with that, so I'm anxious to show you that. As always, if you guys have any comments or would like to see other content, please let me know in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can catch us on the next one. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you soon.